This is the IoT flow meter. You just saw a video of it deployed to the river where it was gathering measurements, but here's the entire system outside of water so you can see how it's built. Uh, what we have here is a PVC pipe structure that holds both the electronics and the sensors for the system. Down here, we have a liquid flow meter that has a 3D printed funnel and a 3D printed bracket attached to it. That bracket holds it submerged under the river water so that the water gets uh, fed into the funnel and spins the pinwheel inside the sensor. Uh, above the water held on this PVC vertical pipe is the housing for the electronics which includes the Raspberry Pi, the 3G modem, and the external battery. Uh, this is held outside the water so it's protected from any water damage and allows uh, the 3G modem to connect to the cell service so it could push measurements to the cloud. So here's another look at the components that make up the system when they're not connected to the PVC pipe structure. Here we've got the flow meter. This is held submerged underwater. Uh, the water flows through one end and spins the pinwheel that's encased inside its housing. The flow meter itself is connected to the Raspberry Pi. On the Pi is a Python script that calculates how fast that pinwheel is spinning and allows us to calculate how many liters per minute are flowing through the sensor. The Pi itself is powered by an external battery and also connected to the Pi is a 3G USB modem with a SORICOM global SIM card in it and that's what provides the internet connectivity that allows us to push measurements to the cloud. When the data from the IoT flow meter is sent to the cloud, it becomes viewable within SORICOM Harvest, which we're looking at right now. Harvest provides a way to graph and plot the incoming data, which allows us to view it in real time and look at trends as new data streams in. For example, right here, we're looking at an eight hour window for when the IoT flow meter was in a river and streaming out data on one minute intervals. So this gets plotted and we're able to monitor it as it's happening and then go back and look at it later to do trend analysis. And the data is captured and provided here for us to easily view it.